All right, this is going to be a quick exercise in dimensioning so that we can start dimensioning uh, all of our drawings. Um, and, you know, for the most part, it's, it's relatively easy uh, when we get into some more complex drawings and go over the actual dimensioning, uh, you know, uh, topic. We'll cover in, in more in-depth in detail about some of this. But realistically, um, I redrew the, the image on, on page 325, uh, number four, uh, since it's pretty straightforward, pretty standard. Um, and it's using all linear dimensions for the most part, one diameter dimension there. Uh, so this will be good practice. So the first thing is, uh, is to change your layers into dimensions. All right, that's number one. Secondly, we want to go to our layout one tab. So all of our dimensioning should be in paper space. Now, uh, I need to double left click inside my viewport. So one, two, and I'm going to move this more or less into the center. All right, now the thing here is, so now we have an overlay of your title block and your border, which is the green, all right, at least in mine. So that is on top. Underneath that, I have my viewport window, which I've just opened up to access my drawing. All right, so now I can scale this up and down. And I'm going to use my scale, my viewport scale, rather. I'm going to try two to one. All right, two to one might work. I'm going to pan that down. Now, the thing to be careful here is, as you're setting this up, you need to make sure that you have all your room that you need for your dimensioning so that your dimensioning is easy and clear to read and understand. So looking at the drawing, this might be a tight fit. Uh, so if you feel more comfortable, you can then change the scale to one to one. And now here I know I'm going to have a lot more room, but I think my dimension, my actual dimension numbers might be a little bit on the big side. So I'm going to try going back to two to one, double the size. And I'm going to go for it here. I'm going to drop this down just a hair. And then I'm going to double left click outside in the gray space. All right. So now basically what this is, is like having a, uh, a sheet of clear paper on top of my blue model and I'm placing all of my dimensions on top of that clear sheet of paper on top of my model. So it's not going in the model, it's going onto paper space. And the, the real quick, uh, quick dimensioning is right here in your home tab is to uh, click on this dimension. And we got some, uh, a linear drop down and a drop down arrow so we can create aligned dimensions on an angle, angular dimensions, arc dimensions, radial, diameter, ordinate and jog dimension. So for the most part, you're going to be doing linear, sometimes aligned, maybe angular, and then radial and diameter dimensions. So this is if you want to force those particular dimensions. Otherwise, you can use the dimensioning tool and that dimensioning tool will automatically uh, figure out exactly what dimension you need based on the clicks that you uh, that you uh, put into your paper space. If you want a more defined uh, version of that, then you'll go up into the Annotate tab. And this is where you'll be able to find more dimensioning tools, more annotation tools. So when I say dimensioning and annotation, they're kind of one and the same. Uh, you're annotating your drawing or you're detailing your drawing, sometimes you'll hear me say, uh, or you're dimensioning your drawing. Okay, So either, either one of those terms uh, you'll hear me talk about. So I'm going to use this dimension tool here, the little sunshine. And the first thing is to do my overalls. So I'm going to, now there's a couple different ways to do this. You can hover over the line and you should see a dimension kind of pop up pretty quick. If you go near a midpoint or an endpoint, you're not going to get the correct dimensioning. So now you're talking about the line itself. Uh, and we don't want the line segment. We want to dimension that line segment. So I got to move my mouse up into the middle, away from the midpoint, away from the endpoints. And I'm going to left click and drag it out and left click again to place it. Okay, so uh, that's, that's how easy it is. So again, I can hover on the line away from the midpoint or endpoints. And I can click and drag it down 
Alternatively, what I can do is I can click on endpoint, endpoint, and then drag my mouse down and left click to place my dimension. All right, so that's another way. Um, then traveling over to the right hand side, we've got two dimensions. So this one I have to be a little bit more careful of. This one I'm going to hover on the line and I'll place that dimension there. And this time I have to use, uh, well, I don't have to, I can go endpoint to endpoint or I can go from line to line. Okay, so you have alternatives. So I'm gonna click line, line, and it automatically recognizes that I have a dimension there. I'm gonna place that one on the outside. And there is a correct and incorrect way to place dimensioning. So your smaller dimension should always be on the inside, your larger dimensions on the outside. Uh, and then we're gonna do our all, uh, overall from left to right. So I'm gonna click line and I'm gonna click on this little half inch line here. Now I'm getting a bunch of O snaps, so I need to make sure I'm away from those. And that part's that. Well, it looks like I did this a little bit incorrectly. So I'll probably have to ex expand that out a little bit. Um, and I, So I can tell that this was drawn off by, by a half an inch. But I'm going to finish dimensioning this so you guys can see exactly what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to draw or put a dimension on this line here. That's that three quarter inch. Drag that up. Uh, same thing with the circle tool or the circles here. All right. If you click on a quadrant, you're not going to get um, you know what you need. So you kind of have to move around, maybe come off and come back on until you get what you want. So this is what I'm looking for left click and then I can bring it out now with diameters and radii your arrows should never be horizontal and they should never be vertical okay those are bad uh, that's bad dimensioning technique on radial uh, di uh, dimensions and diameter dimensions these should always be at an angle other than 0 and 90s uh, so I'm gonna bring this down a little bit left click to set it and now that I have the size of this I need to locate that so locating is going to be again slightly different so I'm gonna click on the circle and I'm gonna click on the oh, let me hit escape I'm gonna do that one more time I should go the opposite direction so I'm gonna go from the line to the circle getting my snaps it's not it's giving me a little bit of trouble I'm gonna hit escape one more time let's try from the circle first one and there we go I'm gonna go for the corner and then based on oop, did not take I'm going to select it, delete it. I'm not sure why this one is giving me such problems right now. Let's try one more time. One and two. Oh, hit escape one more time. All right, this one's giving me issues. So I'm going to do a linear dimension. I'm going to force a linear dimension from the corner to, I'm going to say that center light up. There we are. And left click do it again linear so starting from the corner and go into the center and this time I drag my mouse up and it gives me the right dimension so if, depending on which way you drag your mouse it'll give you the appropriate dimension there so I'm gonna left click here and then I need to do some cleaning so I'm gonna left click on this 375 there's a grip I'm gonna left click on the grip and I'm gonna bring it out to the left and I'm going to see if I can bring this point three up in the middle here. All right. So again, what I'm looking for here is cleanliness, right? Um, how can we make this easy to read? This is bothering me, that zero into the arrow. So I'm going to try to bring this up a tiny bit. 
I'm going to see if I can bring the, the 3.0 in a little bit more. It looks like I cannot. All right, so I've got a little bit of, a, of an issue here. <clears throat> and really, this is just... Um, you know, some some mechanical uh, really has to do with size, um, and I'm not going to get into that just yet. All right, so this will be okay for right now. Um, this actually is a little bit of an issue because we want there to be a gap between the uh, the center mark, and that center mark, if I click on it, it has to do with the diameter dimension. So the diameter dimension actually puts in a center mark for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the extension line, one left click, and I'm going to grab the grip in the center, and I'm going to drag out to the left until I see a endpoint O snap, and I'm going to left click there. So basically what I'm doing is the endpoint of the line for the extension line is at the tip of this center mark and it automatically places a gap. So I'm just kind of moving the gap back a little bit so that it looks the way it's supposed to look. I'm gonna do the same thing on the vertical here. So instead of the endpoint being at the center, I'm gonna change it to go to the, uh, to the end of the center mark. So now I've got a clean, clean center with the exception of this here. This still bothers me, but again, doing this for the first time for you guys, I don't wanna to go too far into that right so next step finally is to change uh, some information here so I'm going to double click on my title and this is uh, we're just going to call it uh, P325 page 325 uh, underscore four for problem number four and left click outside that's going to be my title the scale right if we remember I'm going to double left click the scale is two to one I'm going to double left click back outside again so I have to go in here one two and I'm going to change that first number to a two and left click outside now one thing to be careful of is that uh, your dimensions can move on you or your model can move on you right so what we've done is we've added dimensions to to the paper space my model is still still nice and clean okay and that's the way we like to see it I don't want to see any dimensions in model space that's a big no-no for right now all right so layout one we're looking at dimensions on paper space and that's the way I like to see it um, you can always undo if you mix something up the the biggest mistake people make students make is they they click uh, in here one two trying to change the scale and then what happens is now if I zoom out I just messed up my drawing okay so I'm gonna undo left double left click outside so one more time I'll show you what happens sometimes if I I'm sort of within the text area but I'm not clicking on the text one two I've just entered into floating model space, which means that if I make any changes to my mouse, I mess up my drawing. And if I double left click outside, now my dimensions do not line up. This will be graded incorrectly. All right, so I'm gonna control Z a couple of times. There we go. Double left click on the outside to close that window. So you want to really make sure that if you're highlighting this text, it's highlighted, then double left click and you should see the text box. If you're double left clicking and you don't see this text box, that means you've jumped into floating model space. Uh, and the best way to get out of that is to go down here where it says paper. So if I make that mistake, one, two, you'll see it says model. I know I'm in trouble. So I want to make sure I'm going to left click on the word model and that'll take me to paper space and now I can continue safely without uh, corrupting my drawing a little bit. So this is what I'm looking for for your dimensioning. Sometimes uh, I'll just do this as an example. Uh, if I'm doing a dimension here and it, there needs to be more text added. Uh, so what I'll do is before I actually set my dimension, I'm gonna hit M 
as in multi, right? Or M as in Mary and hit enter. And that stands for multi-text. And that'll allow me to place like a two X and make sure you get a space in there and then left click outside. And now you can add additional text uh, and place it if you need to. So this is obviously not in the drawing. Um, so if you notice that you do have a mistake, right? For instance, this right here, you're gonna have to go back and redraw a portion of it. And you might have to redimension, so you'll have to delete some dimensions um, and redimension some portions. The other thing is that we're gonna start taking a look at precision. Okay, so if you take a look at the drawing, the drawing is uh, to the precision of three decimal places. The dimensions that I have here are a, dimen or a precision of four decimal places. So that's gonna be a slight issue. Now you can do this one by one. If you left click on the dimension, right click on the dimension and go to precision and you can change it to three decimal places, right? And you can probably do the same thing with all of these. So if, if I actually, let's drag a window So now they're all selected uh, and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go change the precision for all of them to three decimal places. So this gives me a little bit more wiggle room and the precision is correct. Um, does precision matter? Absolutely, uh, it really does. So let's see if I can move this out a little bit more. I'm gonna try moving this guy out to the very edge, give me a little bit more space. to see if I can clean that up. All right, so that's, I think, about as cleaned up as I can get it for right now. And that is your quick intro to dimensioning.